Oh, oh, TC. Hey, that's that's cool. cool. You got a podcast? Well, I didn't didn't know know that. that. That's cool. How you do? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. Oh, that's cool. OTC's very own uh, podcast uh, to talk about all of the great people we work with here at OTC. Um, I, of course, am Jared Durden, and with uh, with me as always... With me, with you is Andrew Crocker. That is me. I teach here at OTC as well. I'm a political science guy. You yourself a physics person. And when you were in the classrooms this semester, you and I were talking before we hit record, you just kind of get the sensation this semester that students... The whole campus, really, but students specifically are shot out of a cannon, that they are ready. Just excited, engaged. Not that I don't always enjoy them, but there's just this energy that, like, feels really good. And, and you know, maybe some of it's on my side as well, but uh, just a lot of excitement and, and just happy to be here. Was there any part of you during when a couple semesters we went online, was there any part of you, you're teaching in that mode, the grades didn't particularly drop student performance was pretty much the same when we did remote was there any part of you that was like this is the future of education this is where we are headed you and i are not that old we got a good fat career in front of us and is there any part of you that's like maybe in 10 years this is what we're doing i wouldn't say i never thought we'd full 180 only offer that way Mm -hmm. i definitely thought about how how much more a part of the regular day to day it would be, but I, I never see, you know, being in the classroom together ever totally disappearing. So uh, that's kind of what I was thinking uh, over the course when we went virtual. I was like, I can do most of the stuff in person uh, online that I was doing in person, and the stuff that I can't do in person, you can compensate by doing stuff you can only do online. But I will say, this semester, the first couple weeks, the way these classrooms have been, the way these students have been, I've even gotten emails from them. The communication with them has been incredibly high. And I'm like, this is what's missing. That remote education is fine. We are doing, a, I think, as solid job as a faculty as we can. But I think this is what's missing. And this semester, for those of you that have been in a classroom, I think proves the value of in-person. It's just so much more immediate. Uh, and Absolutely. the urgency is there in ways that it wasn't otherwise. Does that ring Absolutely. true? Absolutely. And I think not only, you know, just in the classroom and with the students, but just everyone else that we work with, being able to see everybody in the offices, being able to walk around campus and uh, meeting people. And, and I've, I've been on my kick where I've been uh, trying to go around and, and if I don't know someone, say hi. And, and Me too. Be yeah. More social. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hey, don't, don't, uh, don't. You know, do as we say, don't do as we do. Jared and I got a pad- podcast going as a flimsy pretext to bring people in to meet. But I've found since we've started this, I've been way more open about ingratiating myself to people all over campus whenever I can. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And I've been even inviting people to come by Norman K. Meyer uh, uh, to to hang out with us a little bit. Right? Yeah. So, so, you know, feel free to walk in our space and say hi and see what it's about either in the science suite or, you know, in one of the uh, uh, faculty hallways. Um, it'd be great to, to get to get to know as much as many people as we can, right? And, yeah. And remember, I've still got – I haven't seen it happen yet. I'm sure it's happening somewhere. Um, but we would love to hear from you about uh, this challenge we have. Introduce yourself to someone you don't know. Have a conversation and let us know what you learned. I've done that. I've had uh, a lunch date or two. With some people that I met, I was just it. I, it's it's you are putting yourself out there <laughs> when you come and say hi to folks. But I have almost I'll never run into people here at OTC who aren't willing to open the same door you are and get to know people. And sometimes you just got to make the first step. Absolutely. And uh, Daniel uh, Ogunyemi on his episode uh, talked about uh, how he just started inviting people to coffee. I took him up on that actually. I uh, uh, recently met with him, and and I've started doing that. Just saying, hey. Uh, you want, to, you want to sit down and talk about something? Jealous. It's work, Jealous it that you got a coffee date out People of Daniel like, Ganyemi. Yeah, come on. All right. So we have a, a kind of a meta episode today. Uh, we are, are, are bringing on someone to talk kind of about this idea of podcasts and, and someone very influential in, in, in helping us getting this one started. Uh, our guest today is Jeffrey Johnson. 
Jeffrey, how are you doing today? I'm doing real good. Thank you very much. The wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> that this, what we are doing right now, well, the three of us would probably be talking anyways. Sure. But we have microphones in our face, and the reason why this is happening is because you helped us get this equipment off the ground. You helped us with uh, the theme song <laughs> to get this going. You're the, the wizard behind the curtain as far as this podcast is concerned. Well, I, that's really nice to say. <laughs> I mean, you guys are... are you know, doing all the content and creating, and I just kind of was like, plug that in right there, and you guys are good to go. So, yeah, it was no sweat. I loved helping you guys. And again, you and Jared both with the no sweat thing. I do this. I, the thing I do is simple. Like, I was telling Jared, <laughs> I finally got a chance to see one of his lectures that he recorded in the Instructional Media Studio, yeah. and he covers that glass and physics uh, gr- uh, you know, uh, uh, lingo, and it just looks like the most complicated thing in the world to me. And he's told me before, he's like, I like phys, I like hard science because it's simple. People are complicated. <laughs> I'm like, that does not <laughs> look simple at all. But the stuff you do, where you take a bunch of wires and you turn it into a functional system, yeah. that's freaking wizard weed- wizardry <laughs> to me. Well, I hope my students think so too. Uh, and I hope that they gravitate towards that. It's uh, the hardware side of of doing anything that's that's you know in the electronic media field comes from i think honestly like one of my favorite time periods in history is right around the turn of the century 1900 big technology industrial revolution all that stuff and i like the tactile satisfaction of just plugging in mics and getting everything to work and getting it to an end result and i think that's honestly where that comes from but yeah man that's that's my gig is what i do i want to say too it was great that um not only did you help us record that theme song, but you, you had a class and you had students in there that not only helped do the recording, but were actually on the track as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the students, uh, the, the, you got a podcast yeah. part, like, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's one of, that's one of my students Speaking saying of, that. That guy needs a, 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 a career in, yeah, uh, he's got a silvers. good, sharp, <laughs> authoritative voice, even though he's asking a question. Yeah. Uh, so, if uh, one of we are bringing you on to talk about podcasts specifically, as I inhale podcasts like they are oxygen. Yeah. Uh, I if you are not talking to me, I have an earbud and I'm listening to a podcast. And all the podcasts I listen to tend to be national. National. Those local podcasts have great intentions, probably this one included, but the execution. Uh, it, it tends to be more enthusiasm than quality content. Sure. You have a podcast called Sir. The Rock Farm. The Rock Farm. Yeah. Give me the premise for that podcast. The, the premise is just a simple journey of a father and his uh, kids uh, through the world of music. And the whole thing came about uh, during the March of 2020 when everything was shut down. My son and my daughter were both working from home. And there was a music assignment in his music class to interview somebody in the family about what kind of artists they like and enjoy. And so we did that, but we did it as a like a little eight-minute podcast. And we sent it in and... And I had a really good time with it. Uh, I got COVID in December 22nd last, last year, made a podcast for my family. Like, Hey, yeah, I had everybody send me little snippets of like greetings and stuff. So everybody could hear, you know, everybody else talking. And then I found that, that original recording with Mac and like, I think it was in May. And I was like, man, I really enjoyed doing that. Like, and so that's kind of how the whole thing was born. And I realized that. 80% of what I say to my kids at the, at the time w- revolved around baseball or softball or something sports. And I wanted to give them another side of me. And so I dreamt up this idea. And so we sit around, we have a guest that's on, and me and my kids talk to that guest about a genre, a an artist, a set of artists, an idea, uh, uh, and it's all music related. And and they don't hate it yet. <laughs> you know, and so it, it's just really fun. That that is such a beautiful premise for a podcast. First of all, yeah, thank and, you, thank you. And that sincerity, that energy behind your your description comes out in every second of your podcast. Oh. I am a devout listener. <laughs> all eleven episodes I've consumed, a couple of them, a couple times over, yeah. and I love listening to uh, the music that I'm not familiar with. Especially when it's like art, like Neil Young. I was not familiar. Uh, uh, the one I told you about was Bruce Springsteen. I didn't know he performed that kind of music oh, yeah. half the time. Yeah. Uh, it was a great episode. My favorite episodes are the ones that feature music I'm aware of. Like you had an episode recently on Queens, the Stone, Queens of the Stone Age, yeah. which is one of my favorite bands growing oh, up. Me too, man. Likewise. And to this day, you had the best description of a Queens of the Stone Age 
riff. You had described one as a giant with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> it was Walking stumbling the around floor. the city yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like, oh, look at that. That's pretty. Okay, never mind. I'm back to crushing again. <laughs> Your podcast is fantastic. The production volume, and, and, and I'm going to join. I have two kids myself, six and three, but still, your kids are? Uh, 13 and 11. And listening to their feedback and your feedback, it's just thank you for giving all of us that to enjoy. Yeah, well, you're welcome, and thanks for listening, first of all. I mean, that's – I I do it because uh, it's something fun for my family to do, but it is super nice to hear – people and there's a ton of people at otc that have approached me like oh hey that last one when you talked to so-and-so and they were so great and i was like oh yeah well thank you and it's been really fun richard turner from the english department i mean you know, him and i are friends of course but like uh he sends me a, a text after every episode that's like this is what i liked and this thought this was great and no so, and kidding and it's, so it's awesome but um shout out to richard turner that's fan- <laughs> that's fantastic yeah and so um you know i just I want to keep doing it because I'm having fun with it, and also it involves the whole family. My wife, we call her the historian, does a section at the end that kind of facts check, fact checks us, and then adds this other information that most of the time I didn't, I I don't know, because I don't know everything about all these artists that are on the show. But um, it's just a fun thing to do as a family, and we all have fun with it. And I think we're getting better, and I think we'll keep getting better. So, but appreciate it. Thanks, man. So you've kind of alluded to a little bit of it, but just tell us a little bit about um, what you, who you are and, and, and your uh, oh, uh, yeah. relationship to the college. Yeah, uh, I'm an instructor in electronic media production. Um, we you know, talk about you know, anything from video systems to audio systems to Photoshop, things like that. And if you're in some kind of media field and are producing content uh, for a screen or for somebody's ears, that's what we're teaching you how to do. Um, I've actually been at the college. This is my 13th year. I started in, um, in, um, uh, uh, what's it, what's that called when you talk to people and, <laughs> um, communications? communications. Yeah. Like what's the, yeah. <laughs> Can you podcaster, that out, ex- podcaster extraordinaire, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started off doing that for three years. I was a videographer editor. Um, and then I transitioned into teaching after, after, uh, after those three years. And I've been doing that for, this is my 10th year of teaching. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I do for the college. Um, I'm kind of an out and about guy. I've, I've had, t- I've made tons of friends here. I've been here for a long time. I try to say hi to people. Um, but, and then I usually about, you know, once every week or so, <laughs> I'll have somebody like Andrew come up to me and be like, Hey, I'm trying to do this thing. Do you have any insight? And I'm like, well, Maybe you could try this or this. If it's, you know, in the realm of a camera, uh, p- a piece of video, um, any kind of editing software or, um, you know, or sound, um, usually somebody's stopping by. But I dig that, man. I get to meet a bunch of people and I've had, I've had a blast being here. So you're in bands too. I'm in a, a band. Is that what you A said? band? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in a band, um, Sunset to Burns. Um, we actually just booked our first show in over two years, two weeks ago. And we're playing a corn maze. How about that? <laughs> Are you that? kidding me? And we're pretty excited about it. I was like, yes, we will do that. Is Are it outside? You? Yes. Okay, perfect. You know, so we've missed playing so much and we're just about to put an album out. And I was like, yep, corn maze. Sure. Five uh, to nine sounds awesome. <laughs> like, just, just do it. How? Are you one of the dead ends? They run into you and it's a band? Yeah, I don't know. I, I have my <laughs> suspicions about, um, I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be like a flatbed trailer and we've got to bring our own PA. So, um, it'll probably get dark real quick. Um, and we'll just be out there like we can't see anything, but. We're gonna make a little bit of money, so it's it's okay. <laughs> how, how many how many songs do you have about corn mazes? I don't know, but I'm sure one will be written that <laughs> night. <laughs> so how would you how would you describe your music? Um, it's it's very hard to describe. Actually, I think it's more of a country feel. I would I would think, but I say that, and then people have this modern country uh, vision come up. Or we're we're kind of like a rock band that has a banjo and an upright bass. A lot of it's uh, well, for instance, uh, the new song um, that we're working on called S- Symptomatic, um, the banjo plays um, in a different time signature than, than the rest of us do. So we've got this, you know, flipping of beats that happen over and over and over. So we're not just, it's not just, ding, 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 ding. like we're trying to do something interesting with all the individual instruments. So, but yeah, like it's, 
It's it's great. I hope people go get the record when it's out in December. So, and we're mm-hmm. gonna press the vinyl. It probably won't happen immediately, but I've never had a vinyl record with my music on it, and I'm not waiting anymore. So, I like, actually you caught never you know. guys a couple of years ago, and I I knew that you were a member. I didn't realize that you're not the only member in Sunset. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna say uh, Sunset to Burns. That's that's from OTC. Yeah, that, that, works at OTC. that works here. Yeah, we have me, Jeff Johnson, and our guitar player, Jeff Thompson. <laughs> Uh, so, and, and Thompson was one of the guests on, on the podcast this year. He's the one that did the Neil Young episode. Did a great job. Phenomenal job. He did a yeah, great job. Yeah. He's, he's a great guy and an awesome musician. Um, so, so yeah, it's kind of strange that the two of us work at the same joint, but like, and he's a former student of mine. So it's even weird sometimes to think like, oh, my first year teaching, you were my student and now we're like hanging out and making music. So that's pretty cool. That's that was a good, good journey. Uh, so. Not to tell tales out of school, but very recently you put out a casting call on the OTC Facebook page for a mandolin player. Yeah, yeah. There's those today. Is yeah. that is that for Sunset to Burns? No, 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 no. Um, I teach a podcasting class. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, the first week we just did this simple intro, you know, lab. Like, tell me about yourself in a minute and add some sound effects and some music. And so today they got their first, like, pilot. Like, we're making a pilot for this season. And there's a student that wanted to do one about interesting instruments, and he's a, a a middle college kid, so you know he's he's a younger guy, and he was like, "Does anybody know anybody that plays a mandolin around here?" And I was like, "Well, hey, I'll throw it out. Let's see what happens." So I don't know. Did you hear anything? Did- I have not seen anything yet. I saw <laughs> Dr. McGrady uh, volunteered. Yeah, I saw that. I'm not sure just- she brings any expertise to the table. Yeah, I don't, I don't- Ex- uh, enthusiasm though. She'll bring that to the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she would. Be willing to play it. Uh, I don't know if anybody might be willing to listen to the podcast about it, but I don't know. Well, I'm sure she would do fine. You just had it in your head, though. You're like, you know, what would really work here a mandolin. No, you had it in your head. No, no. He he was the one that brought it. It, it mm. was his idea. He was okay. like, I, I have a mandolin. Had it in so. his head. As, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I just I was just checking. You on know, the interestingly enough, I've had it in my head to get a bassoon on this show ever since Jared mentioned it one of our very first episodes. Yeah, uh, because that's a weird, phenomenal instrument. You know what? That's a good idea because you play right. No, oh, he's got a buddy. I don't play bassoon, but oh, your buddy did. does. That's Brent right. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but yeah, if you'd like me to get a hold of him, I'm sure yeah. he'd help. Uh, you yeah, I think I think Aiden would dig that. He's he, a good kid, and he we we do it on Fridays, and he would be here Fridays. So he uh, he he. He plays uh, the symphony here and in in, in uh, Fort Smith, but he also uh, plays it in a context of rock music as well. So he'd be, right, he'd be yeah. interesting to talk about. That's awesome. That would that would be cool. Let's see if we can get him yeah, hooked absolutely. up. That'd be awesome. That's what we do here. Uh, <laughs> so um, tell us something that I like to ask, just to kind of get to get to know people. Um, Tell us a hero of yours or someone that you look up to oh, that you'd wow. like to share that maybe the podcast listeners aren't familiar with, or even if they are, uh, tell us why, you know, there's someone important to you or that you look up to. A hero. Or an inspiration. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to do something and people are going to be like, eh, <laughs> gee whiz. There are no wrong answers. Yeah, I know. My, my hero, honestly, right now is my wife. Um, I've, I, we've been together, you know, 20 years, uh, almost. And, uh, she honestly is the thing that, you know, the sun rises and sets with her. And I think, you know, I, I look up to her. She does a fantastic job. I'm a, just an idiot walking around. Like you think I'm, I'm good with sound gear, but you don't give me a checkbook or something that is, that you really need to be held on to, you know, like she, she takes care of all that. And she's definitely my hero. Um, we're a very, very tight family. Obviously, you can tell, like, through the podcast. You can. It comes out. Yeah. And we genuinely enjoy spending time with each other and we make that a priority in, in what we do. And, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, to me, family is so important. It might be my Scottish blood. I don't know, but like, it's, it's something, well, everybody, family should be important to them, not just Scottish people, but, but, um, it's, it's definitely a thing that has, Started with me way young and has continued. So, so I'm gonna go with that. I don't, that's that's what I'm gonna go with. That's a great answer. Yeah, thanks. How'd you cross paths with her? Um, her sister and my sister were best friends. Um, growing up in junior high and then on through high school, and we both attended the same high school together. She was a couple years younger than I was, 
but we never dated in high school. Mm. And then on this weird, just kind of what, you know, right turn in life, I left a job and went to work at a summer camp over the summer. And cause I was like, who doesn't want to do that? Like, should I unpack boxes or should I go play with kids outside and run around in the woods? So obviously chose that it was a day camp through, um, uh, Green County Park Board. And she was also a counselor. And so I kind of got to know her better through that. I mean, I knew who she was, but I got to know her better and finally got up with enough courage to ask her out. And she said yes. And that's kind of the end of the story. Yeah. Was it super nerve wracking to ask somebody out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I spent a whole summer like planting little like <laughs> gingerbread thing like come follow me like this is this is this is see how fun this is when we yeah. hang out and uh it works sometimes and yeah. sometimes it's like <laughs> like right over the head just like no 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 but uh and she was kind of into this other guy that was working at the camp and he was like all um you know the, like fit dude and like just ripped and uh, like i was like in a metal band and, like had stupid hair and earrings and stuff and i, and she, I was like you want to come listen to my band play <laughs> and she did so like and then she was like oh my god i don't know if i can date this maniac but <laughs> but uh but yeah i ended up working out so what was the name of your metal band uh it was called poor man's vision years and years ago i recognize that name was yeah. it locally yeah yeah we played um a lot of times with another band called wake and it was in the days of the juke joint when it, sure, was, sure. Oh, it was around. Oh, yeah. We got to open up for a lot of fun people like Slipknot and Seven Dust. Oh, and wow. we became friends with Finger Eleven. And like, yeah, we played a lot like around and about, but, but yeah, she came back. So to the, to the next show, which was a good thing because I didn't think it would happen. Our, <laughs> RIP juke joint. I still don't think we have a musical venue downtown uh, that matches that. No, and it was so yucky. But yeah. so perfect, like <laughs> yeah. just like uh, this is a rock club. Man. Yeah, like, that's exact. Like, like, you know what? And I think maybe that's why I was so into it every time I went because I yeah. would catch you know middle sized bands every time they sure. came to town, like Goldfinger and such. And yeah, that's a perfect venue for catching a mid sized band. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can remember so many bands though that before they got huge, they they played there, right? And yeah, that yeah. like uh, just seeing them on that small of a stage was amazing. Right, I, I can remember. One time, like, and we, since we played there, like, we knew everybody and we could just kind of go on a whim, just like, oh, just skip through the line and be like, yo, man, let's go watch this band. And I said no one night. I stayed back at the apartment. I was like, I don't know who these guys are. I don't know if there's any good. And it turned out it was System of a Down opening oh. for Incubus. Before, Are you kidding me? Before they, I went to that show, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, and then the guys came back and were like, you won't believe this stuff we just saw. Like, and I was like, man. And so I missed a chance to see them. Oh, wow. uh, late 90s. I'm not sure you can get a better lineup than that in the late Well, 90s. I mean, and it's, and it's, they're so both, you know, was very that, interesting and, and like their sound and just. And that was, is that the release of science or before science? I think it was like maybe on the supporting tour of science because that's what they played a lot of. Because we bought the album, well, the guys that went bought it and was like, and I listened to it, I was like, oh, that's blowing my mind, man. I think that's what it was. You yeah. have to check. Yeah, that was one of the bands I really, I think it was going to see because I saw them right after Enjoy came out. Mm. Yeah, like a little bit, a little bit earlier than that. And it was, they just walked out into the crowd, right? And this is before they, you know, eventually sure, went yeah. to kind of radio fame. But. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, you're, you're always been in the area then? Yeah, man. I'm as local as I get. Um, my f mom's side of the family actually homesteaded here um, out north of town. There's a Murray Park that's uh, just beyond, like kind of on the way to Fantastic Caverns. Uh, you can ride and, you know, walk trails and stuff like that. My mom's maiden name is Murray, is Murray. So their homestead was like right there. Um, my dad was not as local, but um, and, I mean, he's lived here his whole life. Well, shortly after he was born. But yeah, man, I'm, I went to school on the north side and went to Hillcrest High School. It's kind of how I got into media. I have to give a shout out to, to um, you know, Coach Davis for teaching me how to shoot video and edit things. I still talk to him. Coach Davis, he coached a team and he ran the electronics and yeah, media production. Um, yeah, I mean, he was my baseball coach for the first two years and then finally quit coaching and then somebody else stepped in. That is a rare double threat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's a great guy, man. Like, I mean, we text each other probably once a week at least, talking about the Cardinals or whatever. So, yeah. Speaking of, are you guys, did you get your tickets to the OTC night at the Cardinals game? I did not. I, uh -huh. I, I can't go because of a prior engagement. Oh, so. no. Politically Active has bought 12 tickets for, Fantastic. we'll be handing out to ver various students, and I might swipe one. 
because uh yeah i can get out for a game sure yeah. the problem is i it's always difficult for me to get out to a springfield cardinals game because i got two i got a three-year-old and a six-year-old once again and they just want to play in the playground equipment and so that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna peel me away from the game and yeah sure. Sure. so being from springfield then tell us a little bit uh what would you so you and your wife you get a day to yourself what's the most fun you're gonna have in springfield tell us what that day oh was. man that would be awesome. Um, it starts with a concert by Sunset. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want it to work that hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would get up and I would go to, I'm going to pretend like this is just going to happen. I'm going to yeah. go to brunch at Lost Signal. They have a fantastic brunch. Um, they make brunch? Yeah. Hmm. Dude, they've got this. Like, I love their barbecue, but I've never been there. Yeah, they've got, um, what, what do they call that? Uh, They've got a biscuit Benedict. So there you go. Like, that's all you need to know. Shout out so, to Lost Signal. We, yeah, we are racking up potential endorsements by the episode. <laughs> Still haven't reached out to us, but. No. Yeah, right. I would do that. Um, and then probably if I had a bunch of money, I would go and buy my, my wife something nice, like gasoline. And, and then we would go <laughs> back to, uh, we, we have a place that we go to on the lake. And we probably bring bring the kids because that would be nice. Sure, sure. Um, and we go, you know, up there and get on the pontoon boat, ride around, do some fishing, catch all the fish, come back, clean the fish, eat the fish, and then um, hang out by the campfire. That would be my ideal day. So, yeah. fantastic. Break out the guitar and yeah. play a little bit. Yeah, guitar is what you play, right? No, I play upright bass, but okay. um, I can play the guitar slightly. Mm. Um, and my daughter, she wanted a bass for her birthday. She mentioned that on the last podcast on on eleven. And we were able to get her her brand new like electric bass, and so outstanding. Her and Mac are starting to play riffs with each other now, and, and on the electric side. So my plan is working. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working. To the family band. Yeah, yeah. Man. have them play the campfire. I, anyways, I have yeah. just on your behalf. I have found a stand up bass by the campfire problematic. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I can't. I have a really hard time playing electric bass because I'm used to this, and that's how I learned. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> it's so bad, and I f- this, I shouldn't admit this as a as an as an engineer or a tech, but you know my daughter was excited like I'm gonna plug this in. I'm like, yeah, man, you can use my bass amp. Let's go. And so plugging it in, playing, and, like nothing's coming out. And I'm like, oh, like is this thing broken? Like, and I'm I'm checking cables. And I'm trying like troubleshooting and doing all this stuff, and uh, nothing. And I'm like, sweetheart, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll I'll take it back, and mm-hmm. we'll get. We'll get it taken care of. But she's bummed, man. Like, she's totally bummed. And I'm talking on the phone to my mom the next day, and I was telling her the story. And I go, I got to put a battery in the back of it. Like, I was just yes. like, I'm an idiot. I'm not a, I'm not an electric instrument guy that doesn't, I don't think of that. And so I flipped it over, and sure enough, right there, it's like, active man, place for active pickup. Yep. And I was like, you idiot. Like, and then, so then she was, you know, super happy. So that's good. <laughs> no trip to the store necessary. So the big question. I'll strap in. Ready? Yeah. Gumby versus Mr. Ed. Battle to the death. Who wins and why? Oh, man. Gumby, Mr. Ed. I'm going to have to go Gumby on this. The like His dexterity alone could provide multiple attack and defensive opportunities. Um, however, man, I don't know. With the, with the, sure, with the sheer power... Of a kick from Mr. Ed, like it could be just over for Gumby. I'm gonna, it, I'm gonna go Gumby. I it, think Gumby's more like a ninja. I'm gonna go with that. It does beg the question: Can Gumby? We know that Gumby is stretchable. Can Gumby amp up his size? I mean, is he completely negotiable? I don't know. Is his dimension? I don't know, but I would think if he attached himself on something far enough away, <laughs> yeah, and then stretched the opposite direction and grabbed yeah. he, his sheer velocity, that would happen. Like. My and as a physics guy, you, you got to be loving my thinking on this. But yeah. like, uh, I think he could, he could be dead. It could be a deadly, you know, impact for sure. It's disappointing once again that this is a uh, <laughs> uh, an audio format because uh, Jeff was just now with his arms demonstrating <laughs> the attack you really approach. See him thinking it. He, he was really the the he attack the approach. I could see it. I yeah. could see it in my mind's eye the way he spelled it I out like there. I like that breakdown though, attack and defense, right? Attack yeah, and defense, sure. that's right. And I, I especially like the oh, very creative. You need to be in charge of like some Marvel fight scenes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but attack and defense. I, I like the Cobra Kai shirt. Are you a fan of the yeah, show? Yeah, I am a I am a fan <laughs> of the show. Um 
I I got a lot of compliments on this uh, from my students. Um, we have what we call Fun Shirt Friday uh, over in, in the EMP department, so I wore this one today. And yeah, I like the series, man. I'm looking forward for it. I think it's coming out I think soon. So. It's it's one of those things where you don't know if you want to admit it to somebody. <laughs> like you're like, oh, Cobra Kai shirt, and you're like, well, it, it you're like, you a little you're bit. like, well, sure, and and I mean. It's not, you know, brain food. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just, shirt. I mean, it's like just sit there and be like, ah, yep, just next, next one, boom, like, and my kids love it, so that's great. Uh, so yeah, we all watch it. Yeah. I had that same experience on Disney Plus recently when I was uh, finally getting a chance to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I turned it on and I was like, this is gonna be some brainless, yeah, just action scene starts out that way. But the first episode is the worst thing Marvel has ever done. Have you had a chance oh, no. to see this thing? I did. The first episode. The first episode, Falcon is applying for a bank loan. Mm. Half of the episode, Falcon is applying for a bank loan. And this is not that much of a spoiler, but he gets turned down for the bank huh. loan. Lame. That is lame, <laughs> lame, lame. Now, episode two, episode three, episode, all of a sudden, it's starting to, starting to get where starting it needs to, to go. Up. Yeah, there it's you go. pretty awesome. So, is the lame part that he's applying for the bank loan, that he was denied for the bank loan, the whole package? I, at the very beginning of the show, the very first scene, Falcon is fighting a bunch of skydivers with flying squirrel suits. What are those things called? I don't yeah, know. I, don't I think they're called that, yeah. yeah. Flying squirrel suits. And it's phenomenal. That's what I signed up for. I didn't sign up for a bunch of financial legalese <laughs> where he's sitting there and like the uh, accountant saying, so what's your source of income to Falcon? It would have been better if he was in full costume. This is <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> it was, it's just such a waste of time. But then like episode two and stuff like that, the gears start moving. But uh, I, I had that same experience. That's all I want. That's why I like the Marvel stuff. Sure. I just kind of want to unplug yeah. and just like throw the popcorn at me. I'm ready. Go. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's great. It. It's always my criticism is like of the. It's always other people's criticism. It's just these shows are just mindless fist fests. I'd be like, which show was that? That's exactly the show I want. <laughs> I don't know. I disagree. I think what I'd really like to see is an entire series on Spider Man where he engages with the real estate market. <laughs> right, like yeah. that's where I'm at right now in my life. Like, how does a superhero handle a mortgage? Right, how do lessons they, to learn. You know, I actually thought rate? about that watching. And I don't. We're we're really dadding it up here, but I I was thinking about that watching uh, Into the Spider Verse. Phenomenal movie. Uh, the Spider-Man in that universe has a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? A bunker that has, that goes down. You get in the garage and the garage sucks you down. And there's a gigantic bunker. I'm like, did he call 1-800-DIG-RIGHT? Cause I mean, there's, there's <laughs> pipes yeah. and cords and all kinds of stuff in the ground. There, there's so much zoning that had to happen there. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, some people argue, uh, in, in Star Wars that, uh, when the, uh, uh, the big uh, moon base gets destroyed, or uh, it, uh, sorry, not in the first movie, but in the in the second movie when it, or, yeah, the second movie, or no, which one? Do, when did they rebuild it? One, three, and seven. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was on point. I got you. I'm I'm here, I'm here for you. Man. Well, and done. and people argue that really the who was damaged the most were just the contractors that were building them, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's that's exactly really right. Got hurt. Yeah. yeah, that's they're the collateral damage. Sure. That's the real tragedy in the story. So let's get on track. Uh, Jeff, you're here because uh, we'd like to know and our audience would like to know more about what is a podcast? How do you start a podcast? Uh, 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 where do these things come from? Yeah. And I honestly, I didn't, I didn't listen to podcasts very much till recently and still probably am very, you know, like, like Andrew says, he's listening to him all the time. Uh, I, I don't. I have a few that I really enjoy that I'll listen to. Um, and then since I started mine, I don't listen that much because it's like my mind's on something else. But I got into lore, like, a, a, you know, probably two or three years ago, I think. And lore is a fantastic podcast. And then I really like Dax Shepard's podcast, too. I think it's like Armchair Superhero or something like that. Um, really fun stuff, great guests and things like that. But, but these kind of started as these super niche little audio segments that people would share around. And then with the advent of the internet, they became a little more readily shareable. And then the RSS feed was kind of developed so people could subscribe and see new content. Once that started to happen, things started to ramp up. And just like television, you know, television started with news and sports. And like, actually, if you can believe it, professional wrestling was one of the things that was on the first TVs, like all the time. It's crazy. Uh, but 
podcast did the same thing, and I believe it was the Patriots that started like a sports podcast, and that became a thing that people really started to digest. But really, the turning point of 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 podcasts is when we could take multiple you know files of music with us. So when the iPod was developed. That's when things started to really take off because it was easy to take with you. You could put it on your body. You could listen to it on the subway or train or on your commute, whatever that you're doing. And, uh, and that's when they really started to take off. And then they just simply exploded. And so what that's kind of how, how things began. But like what a podcast is, is it's such a tough question because most of the time there's a topic, um, that is being discussed and, the reason I think people are drawn to it is because listening to something is an active, is an active thing. You know, like when you're, when you're watching TV, you are listening, but you're also watching and it's just kind of being thrown at you. But when you're actively listening to something and making visuals mentally, you're very much attuned to what's going on and what's going in your ears. And I think that's why people like them. Um, you can go places. You can go different. I mean, you don't have to have that video side of it. That audio side is enough to get you someplace. And that's why I love audio. It's such a, an old innate thing within us to hear and tell stories that I think we missed it. And I think we brought it back with these. Like, and we used to all sit around the campfire and talk about, you know, you know Joe went hunting today and, well, where'd you go hunting at? Oh, I went hunting over there. And, found one of those oh well, we should go there tomorrow yeah let's go check it out and and then you know you tell the story of joe the great hunter you know you know mm-hmm. and i mean later on down the down the road and i think we missed that honestly i think you know radio became one of those things that was either too shocking or too you know newsy or too maybe just commercial and even though we do hear ads within podcasts a lot of times you don't and it's just a story like people like stories uh, so it, I, it's the way you describe that fits, I think, the Dax Shepard podcast very well. And for the record, armchair expert. Armchair expert. Yeah. Anyways, so <clears throat> shout out to armchair expert. Good podcast. And I think part of the reason is you said listening is very active. Yeah. When you listen, Dax, the reason why, in my opinion, Dax's podcast is so good is because he is incredibly disarming. And when you are disarming, like I would like to think Jared and I are on our best days, you get to hear what these other celebrities and public figures are saying. You're hearing what they're saying, but you're also listening to how they are as people. And there is a very groovy, meditative sound to Daniel Ogunyemi. There's a very colorful warmth with Jennifer Bump when we interviewed her. Very creative precision with Dr. Vivian Elder. And that to me is, I think, almost, I would say it's better than the actual information they're giving you. You're listening to how a person is. And, on, uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I really love episode, uh, uh, podcasts such as Dax's. Yeah. yeah. I think so, too. And, and, you know, until you get into a room and, and talk to some people, you know, you really don't know who they are. And I, I, the thing that I love about this podcast that I'm doing now is uh, I get to have people over to the house, their guests. A lot of times we'll have breakfast or lunch or whatever. We'll eat with them first, you know, hang out and, you know, they meet the kids. And, and I can remember Lisa Fent, she did the, uh, um, the Who and Sticks episode. She was a former orchestra teacher and, uh, you know, a former teacher of mine. And it was just so cool to see. Miss Lisa in my house and sharing this moment with the kids. Of course, sometimes we have to do it via Zoom because people are, you know, far away. But I love that active idea of bringing people inside your space and making them feel welcome and, and just sitting down and talking and not being like, Hey, did you see that new TikTok? Or Hey, did you look at these pictures that I took of, you know, whatever? Like the phones aren't out. That's one of the, that's the thing that I love about. Uh, what we do on our podcast because nobody's looking at a phone and it's just time together to talk about something as cool as music. So there's got to be a way that we can replicate it because when you have a microphone in your face, you are compelled really to ignore distraction because sure. you're afraid that the 15 million people listening uh, 
will judge you for it. Right. There's 15 million people listening. It's my mind's eye. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's stadiums and stadiums full of people waiting for our next episode to drop. But uh, <laughs> there's got to be a way we can reinforce that dynamic into regular human conversation. Yeah. Because I have found, and you know, marriage is a blessing. It's also a day to day, sure. and sometimes it gets dry, and sometimes you both find yourself on the couch for an entire evening, not talking to each other, sure. hanging on your phones. There's got to be a way that we can take that dynamic from a podcast and take it outside of the podcast realm. Yeah, it would be great. Um, and honestly, fix us, Jeff. Yeah, help, <laughs> help like, us do that. I'm help not us the do one that. One to sir. ask about this, man. <laughs> um, but um, like the thing, the thing, the thing that we we do a lot, like as a family and we we do we do put them away and i'm the worst man like i'll bring it like I'm like i'm gonna check my work email i'm gonna check this oh i'm gonna look at this oh how many listens do we have like i'm I'm super busy right now leave me alone oh tiktok there's 30 minutes see ya you know and like oh, it's just it's the worst and so um i think it's kind of funny that like the, even the kids um who you know we all also monitor their usage and they play video games too it's not like you know, it's it's not like the 1930s at our house, but like, you know, me and AIM especially will recognize like, this, there's too much of this. And some days it's like, I don't care. Let them look at it. But a lot of times when we're together, it's like, hey, let's play board games. Board games is, is I wish I could start another podcast that's just about board games because mm. there's so many. And, and now that they're older, we're starting to get into these little more intense board games that I had no idea about. <laughs> and... George Jabot, my department chair, uh, he's a, he's the department chair over EMP, uh, graphic design and networking. He's a networking instructor. He's a huge gamer, like game player too, like board game guy. And, uh, he's, so he's been feeding me these new things that he plays with other adults and like we're trying them in our house and it is amazing. And just, just long enough to, you know, an hour and 15 minutes that we're all actively engaged together and not staring at a phone. It means something to me. And, and I think it's important, and I think they talk to me uh, more efficiently because we're not afraid to talk to each other in front of a stranger in front of a microphone. And I'm not saying you got to make a podcast, but you can accomplish the same thing over a board game or a meal. Sit at the table. Like, you know, are we guilty of not sitting at the table? Oh, yeah, all the time. Like, I'm sitting on the couch. I don't care where you guys are. I am exhausted. But, um, but yeah, I mean... This is little make that little time. Have you been to uh, a board game store like one of the newer ones? No, uh -uh. oh man, there's a great one over on um, Glenstone next to Adobe. Okay, it's just a little down. There's a pet groomer there too, but they yeah they have like dedicated board game stores now. And because yeah. you're right, like there are so many, there's like this revolution in, in creative board gaming, and and a lot of them are um, you know mixed with role playing or they're. Uh, we we got one that's that's a horror game. That's um, what's weird. it called? It's something about Cthulhu. Mm. And like the, oh, it's so intricate. You've got cards and pieces, and you're doing all these things. And sure. They're really. I, we need to find a, a board game specialist. That should, you're not that's wrong. A great podcast. Are we? George Jabot would be a great one to, to start with. Oh, he would be great awesome. lead, hot lead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're we're going to be sending you an email, sir. Sir. Just <laughs> so we make sure we give some props here. It is the Silver Twilight Games. Silver thank Twilight you, Games. The name of the store you just referenced. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a great suggestion too. Um, well, my family we we, uh, we haven't it as much lately. We need to start bringing that back. But we were always big uh, board game players uh, and and all very competitive people. Oh sure. So you got to be careful. Like Monopoly can be a little heavy for yeah. you know, a, a younger kid. And well, the game that I think we love the most recently is called Mysterium. And it's a co-op game, like where you're playing cooperatively with each other. That's how this Cthulhu horror game is. You yeah. have to win together if you don't work together. Yeah, if you know. don't, then and so that's kind of cool anyway. It yeah. builds the you know builds what you're trying to build anyway. Um, but there's like a, a character that's like one of the players is, is a ghost, and they're giving you these these uh, like playing cards that look pretty much like a Salvador Dali painting. Like they're very abstract pieces of or prints and pieces of art. And they're trying to get you to guess certain things, and you have to look at this weird, you know, card and be like, "Oh, I think you want me to, you know, to guess this thing." And, and so it's kind of like this weird seance, and it's 
awesome. Like it is so fun. The first time we played it, I was like, "We're doing that again." Like, let's go, let's let's go again. What's it, the name again? Mysterium. Mysterium. And George turned me onto that. Like it. Like he's got he's got all the knowledge of the game now. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how, what's the what what do you need to start a podcast? What is the base requirement? Just in terms of, of equipment, what do I need to start a podcast? Uh, well, I mean, content is really what you need to start a podcast. But um, as far as equipment goes, is like, you know, you can get a USB Yeti microphone and plug it in your computer and start going. Um, and then once you get done with your recording, you're going to have to edit it and add, you know, theme songs and stuff like that into it. Um, you might want to get an editor. Audacity is a free editor that's very good. Um, what we use for this shout out to audacity audacity mm -hmm. yeah yeah there you go and uh and then like really after that if you want it to be on a platform that people can readily get to you can use services like anchor or services like what i use is lipson um i pay 20 bucks a month to be able to upload a certain amount of content and they distribute it to apple podcasts and, we um, use buzzsprout there you go it's exactly the same services and um and so, and then once you have it out there, it's just promotion from there. And then, and, and I mean, you know, it's so funny. Like I, I get calls from people sometimes and they're like, oh man, there's no way that this is not going to get picked up. And I was like, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I want it to like, I don't want it to become a, a burden. Not that it's even close because I looked, I was like, okay, how much do you have to, how many listens do you have to have a month to get monetized? And it's like 20,000. And I'm like, <laughs> don't have to worry about it. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> That's okay, great. <laughs> but you have gotten great, great feedback. And I, I've been seeing that you've got listeners. You guys are doing really well. How did you go about promoting? Oh, I just did it via Facebook. Uh, most of the people that I thought would want to listen to me yammer on about music and with my children would probably be friends with me on Facebook. So I just threw it out there. Um, I thought honestly about taking it to some record stores and making a little flyer and just be like, Hey, if you're into music, check this out. And I haven't done it like, but I might in season two just depends on how things go. And how many episodes do you, do you have like a plain number of episodes? Yeah. Per season? Yeah. I have 12. I, I try to do 12 per season. Uh, we will release the 12th, uh, for season one, uh, probably Sunday. Now, we don't have seasons. I assume you have seasons just because of the sheer amount of work that goes into every episode. Yeah. I know you're putting a fair amount of work into finding the right person, splicing the music in properly, if that's even the word we use anymore, and then sure. so on. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and honestly, it's just to not burn the kids out. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, everybody's got to take a break from baseball sometimes. So, yeah. uh, just don't burn them out. I'm starting season two a little sooner than I wanted to, but. Like I, I plan on dropping that one at the beginning of October, like because that will take that's twelve weeks until December twentieth, and my wife has more Christmas music than anybody on the face of the planet, and she was like, "We should do a Christmas one." And I'm like, "Actually, that's a pretty good idea." <laughs> yeah. uh, and so uh, she's got all these deep cuts of of just crazy Christmas songs, and uh, she's excited to do it. So that's that's the, what's going to wrap us up, and it's kind of a nice like. You know, put the bow on it, send it away. Like, there's the first two seasons, and we'll pick it up, you know, three sometime in the spring. So People appreciate that stuff more than you might think, too. Yeah. Just kind of putting that kind of effort and thought into it and, and giving them something they figure out and go, oh, that's really clever. Oh, well, thanks, man. Like, uh, like I, we're huge Christmas fans, and since, you know, I didn't get to celebrate last year, <laughs> like, it was kind of one of those things, if we can get to that, then... You know, it kind of marks a time, and I hope we can. Like that's what that's what my hope is. Very cool. Um, so yeah, in terms of, uh, of of promotion and 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 listeners, do you have any kind of gauge about who's listening or how far out this has gotten? For yeah. You or? Um. Well, because of uh, episode six, we had my friends from Wales, Rusty Shackle, on that we met uh, while we were playing a festival down in Arkansas, and. We remain fierce friends with those guys. They're they're excellent. They're just awesome humans, and they were geeked out just to talk to us as much as I think you know we were geeked out to talk to them again, just because we remain friends. And they're huge in the UK. And when they put it out, I could see our UK numbers bump up. Just you know, whatever. We got a lot of Ireland at the beginning, and I haven't seen that really um, continue too much. But it's just 
these little droplets of places. And what I decided to do at one point was tag the, the musicians that we were talking about in my Facebook post. And it was, I think it was season or sorry, episode four. That was the first time I did that. And I tagged, um, uh, it was the one with Phil about world music, um, bloody wood and from India and like all these other people. So I, like I, I did this, this whole thing. And then like the guy from one of the bands commented on my Facebook post. I was like, Holy crap. Uh And I showed my kids that I was like, Hey, somebody that lives in India that was in one of the bands that we talked about just was like, Hey, that was really cool. And I was like, (laughs) how cool is that? I'm like, so they're, they're getting to experience, you know, worlds, you know, beyond Southwest Missouri that they can, they can't even fathom, you know? And so that's cool. Like, and, and, if I can ask, if you're willing to share it, how how could you tell us a little bit about how they're responding to everything? Like, kind of how their yeah. attitude towards it. Like, I'm sure they're listening to it, or their friends listening to it. Like, how is this? How are they feeling about it? <laughs> you know, I think they have a really good time doing it, and it's like kind of a fun thing. And I mean, you know, I'm always going through like 25 minutes to show time, and they're like, oh yeah, okay, you know, whatever. And Max 13, so you know, he's just like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like he's never going to get too excited about sure. anything, uh, but they have told their friends. Their friends have listened, and they've said, "Oh, that's really neat." And uh, they, they like. I think they think it's just like crazy dad's, you know, little hobby thing that we get to do with them. But and that, that's okay. But um, but yeah, they're, they're sharing it at school, and and they're Maggie, my daughter, um, is obsessed with having merch. Like <laughs> we need merch, Dad. Sure. We need sweatshirts and hats and stuff like that because if you've ever met Maggie Johnson before, the only thing she wears is shorts, high socks, and a sweatshirt and a ball cap and <laughs> kills softballs, like just absolutely mm. murders them. Um, and she's, she's the, the coolest gal in the world and, and just such a huge heart. But she's like, man, I've already, she'll like mock them up, like design, like we could do this, you know, with, with like rock farm, like I put like a picture of a rock and then like a, and then like a barn. Like it's, I mean, it doesn't say rock farm. It's kind of like the same thing. And I was like, Oh, this is all great. So, um, uh, but yeah, like that's kind of, Maggie wants to do merch. Mac, uh, you know, he's just like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And and then, you know, I'm like, Ooh, glad you still like it. So (laughs) So, uh, every, every, uh, uh, podcast has its own, uh, air to it. Every person that runs one, has their own perspective and way of being. But generally speaking, and a, a little bit at the risk of sounding redundant here, what are the ingredients, if I am going to start a podcast, what are the ingredients, what makes for a good podcast host, in your opinion? Oh, host. Oh, uh, man. Uh, I would say somebody that doesn't go, uh, candidate, <laughs> uh, which I found myself doing after the first podcast and was like listening back going, oh my God. Yeah, and if you've never recorded your own podcast, boy, do you hear that. Every yes, time. you're just like, you sound like an idiot. Like, like stop talking. And um, I call that the pilot pause. Yeah, the, uh, exactly. Uh, we are now uh, boarding. <laughs> <Yeah. and laughs> if you look out the... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think a good host <laughs> does something like it makes their guests feel comfortable. Uh, nobody's going to open up if they're sitting there with their, you know, arms crossed and in a fetal position, just kind of scared to death. Um, I think they make people feel comfortable. I think they, you know, they have an innate ability and you guys do a really nice job of this. You probably let me ramble too much, but they have an innate ability to move the conversation a little bit further. Like, like, Oh, if, if there's something there, if they find something interesting, they'll ask, um, but they know that we have a destination to get to and they're constantly trying to navigate that highway and see like, oh, well, let's, let's not quite go there. Even though I had that idea, we need to get going. You know, we, we don't need to take a rest stop here. Um, so I think that makes a great podcast. I think a voice is also important. Um, and, but, but not paramount importance. Uh, and I just think attitude, like, are you likable? You know, do you, when somebody listens, are they like, I'd like to go hang out with that guy or that seems, he seems like a nice guy or, or, and, and like, especially women that do podcasts, like their voices, uh, so much different than men's and finding a, a, a woman's voice that lives in that register that just is soothing. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Like I like it. Um, D- Dax's, um, fact check 
uh, gal that he, that he works with on his podcast. She's got a great voice. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the apex of female vocal work. Yeah. Is Kate Blanchett intro oh, yeah. to Lord of the Rings. That yeah. is the apex yeah. of really all vocal work. <laughs> if we're just isolating one gender. Yeah. I love her voice. It's so, uh, it, 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 it conveys so much with every syllable. And yeah. I think because it has that, like you, you're describing like a warmth to it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit lower. And, um, yeah, she's definitely alto, maybe lower. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that my wife complains about when she listens back is she's like, Oh man, I sound like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't, babe. It's all right. But, she sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. Um, it's, 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 uh, those, those things make up a good host. And like, honestly, working and trusting your content, working on your delivery, working on your pacing, like, how do we get from point A to point B to point C? Like, and do it efficiently and fun. Um, I will say, I love lore again. Are you familiar with this podcast, lore? I am not. Is it fictional? Cause I had, there's a place in my heart for fiction podcasts. No, it, it's, it, well, it's mostly um, nonfiction, but it's nonfiction of like mysterious stuff. But it might be like, oh, there's a mansion on this hill, and this is the legend. It's kind of urban legendy. Like mm-hmm. this is the legend of that mansion. He'll go into history and talk. They're about twenty minutes a piece. Super fun. There's a ton of them. And um, so the name is explaining what it is. They're, they're it's looking just lore, at different folklore. Lore. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, one of my favorites. It really got me hooked. And the production value on that is outstanding you can tell the guys like either he's amazing or the folks that they've got working for him are because it is super fun and it's really interesting and when it's over you can go type on your phone or type in a computer and look that place up and see it like mm-hmm. like oh my god that's crazy it is right there yeah so you should try uh, everybody listening if you enjoy podcasts highly recommend like do put one fiction podcast in your in your rotation Fiction podcasts, especially if you find a good one that's hyper creative, they can go places that you and I in our conversations simply can't. They can have a lot of fun, create monsters that talk to each other and sing songs and play songs that pretend to be the weather. Shout out to Welcome to Night Vale. It sounds really, like really you've good. got something very specific. Welcome to Night Vale is a fantastic podcast. Uh, it's essentially a news report of a fictional town uh, that is always under siege from some sort of alien and supernatural menace. <laughs> and it's fantastic. It's great. I highly recommend it. Anybody just get some fiction in your, uh, in your podcast rotation. So you're, you're not just listening to uh, humans talking all day. Yeah. So did I hear you correctly that you teach a podcast course? Uh, yeah, it's a Friday only course. It's a two credit hour course. Uh, we go in there. It's actually the first year that I'm teaching it. Um, it has been taught before in previous years, but this is the first year I'm teaching. It's kind of one of the reasons why I started the podcast is I was like, well, if I'm going to teach it, I better learn something sure, about sure. it. So, yeah. By, it used to be taught by Elizabeth. Yeah. Caitlin Schumacher. Yeah. Caitlin Schumacher. Yeah. She has and, moved on to, I think the news, right? Yeah. She works for KY3 now. She's still an adjunct for us. Mm. She's here Tuesdays and Thursdays and, um, works for, with our students then. But yeah, man, she's on, she's on KY now. She's big time. And so in this, podcasting course um I, I can imagine it's kind of project based and you, you've told us of some of the things that they that they do and you know the end goal is there some product that you end up with that then is released um we we don't release it i tell them steps that they can take to release it if they want to um but it's more just about at the beginning it's how to use the software and then like kind of helping them with content and navigating like what they're going to talk about and what's better and what's worse and uh just kind of helping them try to figure it out you know that's that's about it like it's only 16 weeks so there's only so much you can do yeah, yeah. and you know there is something real interesting about running a podcast that mirrors growth as a human because you need to be satisfied and tell yourself that you're enough now and not focus on your shortcomings too much. Sure. But build on your shortcomings going forward. And in a way, putting this podcast together has done that for at least me, probably for Jared as well. I have had to grant myself some grace in those early episodes, especially as we're getting technical snafus worked out. But over time, it's gotten smoother. We're getting more used to it. I, I know that your podcast has made adjustments. Sure. But that hasn't detracted from the quality of the earlier episodes. Thanks. You just have to be happy with where you are. Don't beat yourself up too much in a podcast or in life and uh you know 
understand that where you are in your metaphorical episode 50 is not where you are in your metaphorical episode 8. I totally agree. <laughs> and I think allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to go on an adventure like creating a podcast and putting yourself out there. I mean, this there was a, an episode of Women in Music. And that we did with um, Jess Belisle. She's from KSMU, also from the band The Hook Knives. Good friend of mine. And she was talking about Brittany Howard from um, Alabama Shakes. And she said, you know, you know, Brittany's great and all that. I was like, oh, man, she's awesome. And I said, she's a powerhouse. And I was like, she is an inspiration for every female artist. And, she, and then she said, she's an inspiration for every artist. And I said, wow, oh, my God, yeah, you're right. And then I, because we, we edit the podcast, mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to re-say that again. And so I said it the way it should have been said in the first place. And, and then I decided to myself, I was like, no, I'm going to leave it in as a lesson to me for, for, you know, being conscious that words matter and words mean, you know, a ton to people if they, if they listen to it one way or the other. And we addressed it in the fact check section uh, later in, in the episode and it felt really good. Like I was like, yeah, I, I said something kind of stupid, uh, not meaning it to be any, you know, any kind of, any kind of thing that would, you know, embarrass anybody or, or make them feel bad. But like, I shouldn't have said that. And, and I've taken things out of the podcast that we, we go down some dark roads and I'm like, let's not talk about that. This is fun. And so, but I left that one in just to, just to, just to be, just to learn. And I think, like I said, that's that that's vulnerability. So if you can if you can be vulnerable and you can, you know, give it a shot and just throw it out there and let it let it sit. Like just do it. So fun. It's a little liberating too. I like that. And I mean, you know, as a musician, as a as an educator, you're familiar with, you know, how important process is, right? Sure. There's so much that happens. You know, the first draft isn't the final cut and there's so much work that goes into editing. But mm -hmm. I love, there's a quote, I can't remember who said it, that'll be on our fact check next week, but um, how do I know what I think until I see what I say, <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. And so then you, you need that sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's just important that, you know, as the truth is, is as important as correcting or owning up to things that you realize are mistakes, right? Sure. Like it, it's, it's that process. It's an important part of, of it. And I think it's just as meaningful that, you know, you, you say the right thing as you, you say, oh, I said the wrong thing. Or, yeah. or, or I, I could have said that better. Right? Sure. And that's one of the reasons why I value my communications degree. You and I both have one. Um, because one of the things you learn in communication is whatever percentage they pull out is kind of arbitrary, but it's got to be like 10% of communication is verbal. And that 90% of communication where podcasts live, the best podcasts give you that 90 in spades so you can hear the way a person is. Mm -hmm. And those errors, which I've made one of those, in my opinion, in an earlier episode on this podcast, um, they're a very important part of who you are. And I agree, you got to let them breathe. You got to yeah. let those mistakes breathe. So that they f inform you and make you better going forward. Yeah, you can't learn. I mean, like, unless you kind of screw up sometimes. Like, nobody's going to be perfect out of the, out of the you know basket. Just boom, here, here. Oh, I'm now a podcast guy, or like, <laughs> now I'm great at dealing with humans on a daily basis. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what the obstacle is. I think failure, like, you know, it helps you. Like, I would. That's that is one thing that I do find that's interesting about students that are student aged now um they're very afraid of doing anything that's new and not you know fully understanding exactly what they're doing and that may be a generational thing and i i i, I do this with my son a lot i'm like hey go get the fill in blank here it looks like this is shaped like this and this is the job it performs and then so he'll go get it and i'm like okay now use this tool whatever it happens to be to perform this task i don't know how to do that figure it out, like try it. Okay. And then like, he, like I, I told you I couldn't do it. I was like, no, you can't do it that way, but you can do it a different way. And then figure it out. Like I, I, I love that. Like, like it, like that little, that little, you know, just kind of, Oh, I am going to figure it out. I am going to try a trial and error. Like I said, it might be generational, but 
That's how I learn. I know that's human. I think yeah. learning is participation, right? Right. Yeah. It, you, you, and I would go a little bit farther from what you said and say you do not learn without mistakes. I agree. Right. And uh, I, I think one of the things I try to do in the classroom, and that, and the reason I try to do it in the classroom is because I see the value of it, and I think I'm learning more and more the value of 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 wanting failure. Yeah. Right. Knowing how important failure is to. To, to improve, to be better, to push you, to motivate, and and not seeing it as oh this means I'm terrible. Mm-hmm. Instead, it means oh this means I'm really trying. Yeah, I wish failure was um, at a certain task was more was was worn like a merit badge, like merit badges are. I was like, well, nope, I screwed up at this, but I learned something, so that should be that's that's a valuable lesson. I'm trying to figure out how to put a grade on it. You know what yeah, I mean? you're right. How do you sc- how do you because you want to reward people taking risk right sure and and how do you how do you make that part of the assessment right? yeah that's a, that's no no i did not expect i did not expect us to be drilling into the human condition <laughs> i thought this was going to be i thought this was going to be like real nuts and bolts but it's kind of fascinating now that we're talking about it. maybe this is why Jared and I love doing this so much. I wonder if people have made like bingo cards yet for our <laughs> conversations. And Those things are destined to fail the way we careen. <laughs> oh man! He disagrees with the with the oh. uh, Gumby versus Mister. That might as well be the free square in the middle. <laughs> That's great. Um, a, a, a lot going on. Uh, I, I, I learned a, a, a lot, a lot about you too. Just uh, it's an interesting person and doing so many things and, and taking risks. Uh, I, I think is a great inspiration and uh, 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 for for other people to um, to kind of maybe start their own podcast. Sure, maybe yeah. Try out their own music. Maybe try out something they haven't done before that um, connects them to other people here at the college. Sure. And if you do it, tell us because we'd love to promote. Your podcast, like I get a chance to every time I can with Jeffs, and I'm 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 really serious. I I if if anybody has any podcast ideas and want to help that <laughs> get that going, uh, uh, reach out to me. Uh, 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 I I would love to help um, to help kind of build this idea. Uh, there's something in the back of my head that thinks it would be cool if we kind of had our own media outlet here, and and we're not only you know. Uh, uh, putting out what students do, but also uh, what instructors do, and thinking about that as another way um, to Im- improve our community. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, whew, Sunset to Burns, uh, the Rock Farm podcast, uh, how to get podcasts going, how to think about uh, great ideas in podcasts. There was just so much today, Andrew, that I didn't know. Did you know that? Sir, I did not know that. But now you do. Mm-hmm. Thank Thanks you so sir. much.